Hi everyone, this is Garezo here and welcome to workflow number 5. The animation you're watching right now was created for the Loop the Loop animation challenge and the theme for this one was Job. So let's do it! Before we start, don't forget you can always get the project files for my animations on my Gun Road page for a symbolic price. By the way, a huge thanks for everyone that support the channel by buying these files. You guys make my day, seriously. Alright, so what I tend to do with this kind of project is to come up with ideas that include something that I want to practice next. In this case, I mostly wanted to practice some walk cycles and action in perspective. So after giving it some thought, I settled with the idea of this guy happily walking down the street, tripping over and falling flat on the floor. As the idea is quite simple, I jumped straight into Photoshop to start sketching. I'm really enjoying working with silhouettes to define my character's proportions and shapes. It feels a bit like sculpting to me. So I did several quick tests and I quite liked the overall feel of this one here. But I wanted to play a bit more with the proportions. I did the second pass here but I felt I was not quite there yet. So using the same base idea, I started over and got to the silhouette I ended up using. Then I added some details to finish it up and took it to Illustrator for tracing. In Illustrator, first I traced the shapes over the sketch, starting with lines only and separating all the body parts for animation. In this step I usually make some minor tweaks to the shapes and details. You can see here that the mouth and the belt are a bit different. Then I went to Coolers.co to browse for some color palettes to colorize it. I talk about this process in a bit more detail on previous videos, so if you're interested, make sure you check them out. Then I made several copies of the artwork to experiment some other color combinations, mostly by playing with the color tools in Illustrator. I like to keep the options open and I can jump between color palettes several times during the process. At first I selected this version here, but I ended up sticking with my first option this time, with a different background color. With the colors and design defined, it was time to start animating. As I was going frame by frame, I exported an image to use as a guide in Rough Animator on my iPad. As always, I tend to break the character apart into simple shapes and animate them separately, starting with the parts that are driving the movement, in this case, the legs. That way I can focus on the timing and test things quicker. So I first animated the walk cycle on fours, 16 frames per step, starting with the contact poses, adding the passing position in the middle with roughly the same pelvis height, and then, as this is a double bounce walk, I added the two mid positions as lows. That gave me this happy bounce look that I was going for. Then I finished the cycle drawing the upper body to make sure everything was working properly. After I was happy with this, I moved on to complete the animation, starting with the legs once again. Then I added all the other elements in passes in separate layers. I think the more complex the action, the more we can benefit from breaking things apart into bite-sized chunks. This time I wanted to try cleaning up in After Effects, so I exported a video file to use as a guide there. The first thing I did in After Effects was to import the artwork from Illustrator as a composition. Then I converted the layers to shape layers. You can do that by right clicking and selecting Create, Create Shapes from Vector Layer. But just be aware that if any of your Illustrator layers has transparency or go outside of the frame, you get some empty squares around your shapes, like I do here. In my case, the shadows have transparency and the background extrapolates the boundaries of the artboard. Let's go back to Illustrator quickly so I can show you what I'm talking about. As you can see here, the shadows are set to 30% transparency and the background extrapolates the canvas. So if I set the shadow transparency at 100% and delete the background layer because we don't really need it here now, then save and do the same thing again in After Effects. Let's just delete the shape layers we created before. Then right click, 
create create shapes from vector layer. Now we don't have the empty squares anymore. There is a plugin called Explode Shape Layers that I have here that fix this issue no matter how your Illustrator file is set up and delete all empty artboards automatically if needed along with some other features like merging several shape layers into one layer which is really nice but there's nothing you can't do without it. It just makes things a bit easier and faster. Anyway, what I love about After Effects shape animation is the ability to transform only the selected points and how easy it is to do so. So if you want to bend a leg, for example, all you have to do is to select the pen tool, click on one of the points, then hold Ctrl or Command and drag a selection around the points you want to edit. Then just double click one of the points and transform them the way you want. That just makes editing shapes for animation a whole lot easier. But like everything in life, cleaning up in After Effects has its pros and cons. Let's open our final comp here. For me, the most obvious downside in After Effects for frame by frame animation is not having onion skinning natively which is basically the ability of overlaying previous and next frames on top of the current frame, so we can align them properly. But there is a workaround for this, which is not perfect, but it does the job. What I did was to create an adjustment layer on top of everything to apply two echo effects to it. Let's just solo some layers here. The first one is for frames before the current frame, and the second one for frames after. Let's just delete them and recreate step by step so you can see how I set this up. So first, let's add an echo time effect. And let's call it frames before. Then we need to tell the effect to read the animation in one frame increments. As the effect treats times as seconds, we need to find out what one frame means in seconds. To do that, all we have to do is to divide 1 by our frame rate, which is 24, and we get this number here. Let's just round that down to 041, because as the effect is rounded up, it will show frames that we don't really want to show. And as this one is for frames before the current frame, let's make it negative. The number of echoes here define how many frames you want to see. If you are working on twos, when you set this to two, it will show you one frame before, if you set it to 4, it will show you 2 frames before and so on. Then we set the decay to say 0.6. This will decrease the transparency of the frames the more distant in time they are from the current frame. And finally, you can experiment with the echo operator here. I've set mine to minimum. Then let's just duplicate the effect and call it frames after. This time, make the number positive, as this one is for frames after the current frame. Finally, click on the name of the layer here, select New Effects Control Viewer, and on the new panel, select our adjustment layer here. And find a place in your panel layout, so we can turn it on and off as needed. And now you can see that we have a pretty handy onion skinning in After Effects for us to use. Alright, so for the cleaning up process here, I basically imported the reference video from Rough Animator. Then, as always, I did several passes, each pass on its own separate layer, aligning and editing the shapes to match the reference video, using hold keyframes. If you look at my rough pads here, you'll see that this time I kept some parts of the animation on 4s instead of the usual on 2s. Like you can see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. I did this to experiment using After Effects shaping tweening capabilities to save time when drawing in betweens. After finishing matching all the frames to the rough pads, I went back to these sections and turned the keyframes to linear, added another keyframe in between, and turned it back to hold keyframes. Let's just delete these in between frames here to show what I mean.
By making the keyframes linear, I'm telling After Effects to interpolate between the frames, as usual. Then I just create another keyframe here, here, and here, for example, and turn them back to hold keyframes. Doing that, I got lots of in-between frames for free. On some of them, I had to do some tweaks, depending mostly on the action, but that definitely sped up the process. If you're planning on trying this, just make sure your shape points align from one frame to the other when creating the main keyframes, because After Effects will use this information to interpolate between the frames. Okay, so for the briefcase, the paper, and the floor, you can see here that I'm using Cinema 4D layers. As you are probably aware by now, we all get a simpler version of Cinema 4D called Cinema 4D Lite, bundled with After Effects. To create a 3D scene, all you have to do is to select File, New, Maxon Cinema 4D File. Before going to Cinema, I rendered the animation in After Effects with the rough pass visible to use it as a reference. You need to render it as an image sequence to apply it to a material here. Then I started by creating a simple briefcase model and created materials using flat colors using only the luminance channel getting the colors from my color palette. Then I positioned and rotated the briefcase using the front camera and step keyframes, which is the equivalent to hold keyframes in After Effects. Then I created some planes to use as paper and some spline paths for them to move on. Unfortunately, you don't get this spline wrap deformer with the light version, but you do get the align to spline tag. To break the stiffness of the paper, I use the band deformer, also animating it frame by frame. Finally, I created the floor with some cylinders as lines and aligned it to the rough pass. You don't get to render anything inside Cinema 4D Lite, so to get the separate passes in After Effects, I duplicated the file a couple of times and changed the visibility of the elements for each one of them. All right, back in After Effects, the last thing I did was to add some grain texture. I've been working on a solution for a good looking slash automatic grain texture effect that adapts to changes in the shape and gives you better control of the overall look, and I'm pretty happy with what I came up with. Let's change to this other comp here for a moment. So this texture is a sequence of effects, and I made an animation preset for it. So now, when I want a noise texture, all I have to do is to apply the preset and select the layer here on the set matte effect if it's not already selected. There are some expressions linking properties and stuff, I'm not getting into details on how I did it on this video, but I'll make a tutorial for this technique next. Meanwhile, you can get it on the project file that's available on my Gunroad page. Alright, and I guess that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching all the way through, and I hope that was helpful somehow. And don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. Good studies, and till next time.